The next thing you want to be talking about is um, a little catch-all, like a sweep to catch everything. Okay? After you've asked them all these questions in their past medical history about any problems that they've had before. And what I normally do, because patients sometimes find it very difficult to be asked on the spot about their medical history, because it might span on 30 odd years. So I normally do this, I use this mnemonic, jade, tab, march. And basically what we've got is we divide it into three nice parts. These are your general things. These here are your respiratory things. And these here are your cardiovascular things. Now, I normally forewarn the patients, otherwise you could take ages on this bit. And remember, you don't need to do this particularly for your OSCEs, but it's really useful in the future when you're practicing to be able to catch everything and not miss anything. So this is why I always hang on to this quite dearly. So I normally say to the patient, I warn them, I say, I'm just going to ask you a couple of quick questions now. And these are going to be, obviously, you know, these are going to be closed type questions, but we don't tell them that. You tell them, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions now. I just want you to answer yes or no to, to these questions. So, J stands for jaundice. Jaundice. So it's, have you ever suffered from jaundice? Some people know what it is, some people don't. If they don't, or have, if you ever found somebody saying that you look a bit yellow, or been treated for being a bit yellow? And if that's a no, then that's great. Then you move on. A is for anemia. Have you ever been quite pale or needed a blood transfusion, like a top-up of blood? And most people should know that. Then you move on to D. D is diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus. So have you ever suffered from diabetes before? Okay. So this is a good question to ask. Or do you suffer from diabetes now? E is epilepsy. Have you ever suffered from epilepsy before or do you suffer from epilepsy at the moment? And that covers all your generals. Then we move on to your respiratory conditions. So your respiratory conditions is T is for TB. Have you ever suffered from TB before? Or do you suffer from TB? A. Asthma. Have you ever suffered from asthma before or do you suffer from asthma at the moment? B. Bronchitis. Have you ever suffered from bronchitis before? M, we'll move on to cardiovascular now. M, have you ever had a myocardial infarction? You don't ask them that, do you? No, that's a pure doctor's term. So try and minimise jargon. You ask them, have you ever had a heart attack? Okay, so keep using the patient's words at their level. A, angina. Have you ever suffered from angina? Do you suffer from angina? R, this is the rare one these days, this one. Okay, it's a rare one. Have you ever suffered from rheumatic fever? And then C, do you happen to know what your cholesterol is? Okay, and most people of these days know about their cholesterol. They go to see the GPs, have it checked, and they come up to you and say, oh, I'm really, really pleased, it's less than five, I really did it. It used to be seven or something like that. And then we've got here, H is hypertension, so do you suffer from high blood pressure? And with all that, that normally covers a full sweep on your past medical history. So let's move on to the next bit. We're on to number five now. So number five is your DH, which is your drug history. Okay, drug history. So what medications are they on at the moment? And normally with elderly people, they'll have a prescription, repeat prescription, which they carry in their handbags and, and things like that. So, which means they can normally at this moment in time can ask that, do you happen to have a repeat prescription on you or any, a list of your medication? And they'll normally bring that out and they give that to you and you can copy the information down carefully, very carefully. I remember this is how you should write down medication. You should write down drug name. In the next column, you then write down drug dose. And then you write here frequency of medication. So either it's BD twice a day, um, OD once a day, okay, or TDS three times a day. And then you write finally root, how it's going to be delivered into the person. 
So, is it PO for per os by mouth? Is it IV? Is it IM? Okay. Now, remember, in drug history, this is the point where we ask whether there's any drugs they're taking over the counter at all. Okay? So some people will take drugs over the counter at the chemist and not realise that this is actual medication. They just think, oh, so you can get it over the chemist, it's not real medication, it's just a sort of a pick-me-up. We need to find out about those. Also remember that other people use a lot of health foods and health food shops. And some of the herbal remedies that they sell are basically like drugs. Okay, remember that most drugs came from some sorts of herbs. Um, so it's important to get those down, just in case it may have a bearing on the case. Just in case. So that's your drug history. The next thing that we're going to move on to is we're going to move on to A, and A gets a separate bit on its own, which is allergies, okay? Now this is a very, very important one, an absolute must for your OSCE examination, because this is a patient safety point, okay? Patient safety scores highly in all medical school examinations. So allergies, do you have any allergies? Are there any medications that you're allergic to? Especially get that one out, okay? And common allergies you'll find are to things like penicillin. Okay, um, there's things like, um, some people have allergies to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Example, ibuprofen. Now, with all allergies, you can't just take what the patient says um, as, oh yeah, I've got an allergy to that. You then have to ask another question on top of that if they say they do have an allergy and say, what exactly happened or what happens when you take this thing that you're allergic to? And listen to what they say and make a note of it. Okay, so some people say, oh, I come out in red blotches, doctor, all over. I just look like a swollen bumble. And some people say, I just, I, just, I just feel really sick, doctor, and I just can't keep anything down for days and days afterwards. And some people will say all other things. But you've got to make sure you make a note of that. Because it may come to a stage whereby the drug that they're allergic to, allergic to apparently, is actually the best drug to give them. And then somebody further up the chain, either consultant or somebody, may, may need to make that decision as to whether it's worth taking the risk to give them the drug which is the best for getting them better when there's a risk that it may cause them to have an allergic reaction. Okay, very good. And then we move on to FH here now, which is your family history. Family history. Now, family history, um, in family history, we're trying to find out things like um, if there are any conditions in the family which we may need to know about, which may have a bearing on this case. So my opening question normally is, um, are there any conditions that you know running your family which we may need to know about? And most people, if they have a condition in their family and they're aware of it, they will tell you. If not, um, a question you can sometimes ask is, um, did your, if there's an elderly person, did your parents both live to a good age? And sometimes, you can then find out if somebody died quite prematurely, quite early, what they died of, and that may indicate that there is something genetic within that family which may predispose this individual you'll now see to a similar type of problem. So it's important to find that out. So family history. Also for genetics, this is where we start drawing family trees. Sorry, let's do a square there. Yeah, mum and dad and all the the ones coming up underneath them. So you can do your family tree there, but unlikely that you'll get something of that complexity. Then we go to social history. Now social history is rather loaded, it's not going on, okay? Because this marries up a little bit with what we found up, up here. Because what you've got to remember with history taken, this is a person who's come to see you. People have lives, just like you as a doctor has a life. After you finish work and you clock off, you're going to go home. And there's certain things that you do. Like you go to cinema, and you go out and you play sports, and you meet your mates in the pub, or whatever it is you do, there are things that you do outside, which define your social 
your social status or social what you do socially outside. So, um, social history, the things we want to find out from this are, does a person smoke? And if so, how many per day? We want to find out if they drink alcohol and then also amount and it's normally expressed in units and per week is better and then we can compare it against the national recommended guidelines. The next thing that you can do under social history is inquire about um, Inquire about their job if you haven't already done so. So it's occupation again has a has a chance here. The other thing that has a chance here is to find out if they use any sort of you've got to be careful about this, if they use any sort of recreational drugs. Okay? So these are these are medications which are used to uh, to help people with them provide them with their kicks or whatever it is that they, 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 they get from them. This is your wacky backy and all the rest of that stuff. So any sort of recreational drug use. You also want to find out, especially for elderly people, about their ADLs. ADLs are their activities of daily living. Activities of daily living. So, the activities of daily living are as follows. Can they dress themselves? Can they wash themselves? Can they feed themselves? Okay. Do they need any help to transfer from one place to another? So that's not from their house to the shop, say, or down to see their friend down south. It's transfer simply from, like, from a chair sitting to the bed. Lying. Next, you want to find out about their mobility. So, how many people does it take to move them around? Do they need to one person either side and walk in between two people, or do they walk with a stick? So, how do they mobilize? Or is it with a zimmer? So, that's ADLs. Next, we're on to systemic inquiry. So systemic inquiry, we're talking about all the major body systems here. So the major body systems are CVS, which is cardiovascular, respiratory system. You're talking about your GI, which is gastrointestinal. We're talking about your GU, which is genitals and urinary system. We're going to talk about MSK, which is your musculoskeletal system. I'm talking about CNS, which is your nervous system. And don't forget, the largest organ in the whole body is your integument, which is your covering. That's what tegument, tectum means. Your covering, your skin. So. You need to find out direct questions for all these to do a final sweep to find out if there's anything else, anything else which um, may be going on.